All right, section 1.1 is called a brief preview of calculus. So we're going to look at some of the concepts um, of calculus. Some of them um, are going to look um, more like you're doing uh, sort of some, some things with numbers, like addition, subtraction kinds of things. Um, but they're all leading to the same place, I promise. So to start with, what is calculus? Um, calculus is the mathematics of change. So we're going to be looking um, at a variety of ways of how certain things change in mathematics. How are we doing on the slide? Is it clear enough for you to see, or do we want more lights off? It's fine? OK. Um, there's a couple of things that we can look at. Um, you've seen these ideas before. Where have you seen secant line and tangent line before? You might have seen them in trig. There's another place you might have seen them first before trig. Geometry. You might have seen them in, yeah, in high school, like in a geometry class. Usually geometry is the first time you see that. Um, secant line um, and tangent line in a geometry class are usually talking about it in terms of a circle. So a secant line is simply a line that cuts through a circle in two places. So you have two intersection points like this. Um, but there's nothing different about that um, in calculus than there is in um, geometry. So we also talk about secant and tangent a little bit differently in trig, so that's kind of why I'm avoiding your trig discussion here for the moment. But um, when we talk about secant line in calculus, it's more like it was when you were talking about it in geometry. So in terms of a curve, it's just like it was in terms of a line, or I'm sorry, in terms of a uh, circle. You're looking at a line that cuts through the curve in two places. Okay? That's a secant line. It doesn't matter if it's a circle or if it's a curve. Um, a tangent line, however, does not cut through a curve. It looks like it's sort of resting on top of the curve. Um, and that's the same thing that happened in geometry. So you've got that it looks like it's sort of resting on the curve. I've had a student describe it as sort of like kissing the curve. It's just that very surface right there. It doesn't actually cut through the shape. And the same thing, of course, is true when we're looking at it for a curve instead of for, sorry, get that in there right. There we go. For a curve, um, just like it was for a circle. There we go. So that right there would be a tangent line. Now, we're going to do some estimation next, and that's what you're going to need a calculator for. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do two different types of examples using calculus. Um, the first one we're going to look at is estimating the slope of a curve at a point. So if you've got your calculator with you, go ahead and grab that. Inside of your y equals menu, I would like for you to write this function. So our function is going to be x cubed plus 2. Okay, so um, in Y1, you should have written X cubed plus 2. And what we want is we want the slope. Do you guys remember the equation or the way in which you find slope? How do you find slope? Okay, yeah. So there's one equation that, you're, that people always think of as the Y equal MX plus B equation. That one is a slope-intercept form for a line, but it doesn't actually find a slope very easily. Um, so usually when we're finding slope, we're talking about this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. A um, few details. First, of course, is that the y's are on top of the x's. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether I put y2 first or x uh, or y1 first as long as the top and the bottom match, you know, the ordering. So I could rewrite this as y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. That'd be okay as well. Um, and what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to estimate the slope nearby the x value, or were they calling it right here, the a value of 1. So what that means is that I need to find, in order to find slope, I need to have two points that I can actually find a line through. And that, that's how we determine slope, is that we take two points off the line and we calculate the y2 minus y1 and so forth. So right now, I know that I have one x value. So this is sort of an, like x equals 
1. So if x is equal to 1, what is y equal to in our equation? What is it? Right, so this is our equation with the 1 plugged in. So what do we get? 3, right? So we do 1 cubed, which would be 1, and then plus 2 would give me 3. So one of my ordered pairs, one of my x's, y's, and so if we're going to put them somewhere, I'll just put them at the second place. Doesn't have, doesn't matter. It's going to be x1 is equal to 1 and x and y1 is equal to 3. So what I actually have here, if I want to sort of erase this piece and take a look at it again, is I actually have now a uh, value where I have 3 right here and 1 right here. That is an ordered pair on my curve. I want another ordered pair on my curve that's sort of close to the point that I already have. So close to the value of 1 might be a value, and there's nothing special about me picking this, but I think 1.1 is awfully close to, to 1. So I'm going to pick 1.1. It works pretty nicely. So what I need us to do is I need us to find the y value that goes with the x value of 1.1. How do we do that? Right, we just put it into that equation. So we could actually manually do that in your regular calculator screen by hand, 1.1 raised to the third power plus 2. That's one way to do that. Okay? Somebody tell me what you get when you plug that in. So what we're doing is we're doing 1.1 raised to the third power plus 2. And it should, I mean, honestly, it should be close to the y value of 3. This is a nice, pretty curve. There's nothing special or exciting going on with it in any particular place. What do you get for your y value? Mm-hmm, that's exactly right. 3.331. Now, we're going to do this several times, and you can see the way that I've set this up. We're going to do this three times here, and we're going to do it three more times over here. So we're going to do this six times. And it's not terribly difficult to re-enter this every time. But it'd be nice if we didn't have to, wouldn't you agree? If you could just sort of just put in the number and it spits out your answer right away without you having to type all the rest of it. Well, you can do that. So in your calculator, if you have the TI-8384 kind of calculator with you, or even an 89 will do this, although I'm not going to be able to give you good instructions on how. Um, I'd like for you to go into your y equals and make sure you've already put in this x cubed plus 2. Did everybody do that before when we mentioned it? Great. I want you to hit, um, let me see if I can make I want you to make sure that your table is set up correctly, so I want you to hit second window. That's the table set feature. Is everybody there? It's got little buttons that say auto and ask. Does everybody see auto and ask kind of buttons? All right, on the auto and ask, the first one where it says independent, auto ask, you should have ask highlighted. And on the second one where it says dependent, auto ask, you should have auto highlighted. Uh, what this does is it allows you to go into the table, which we're going to do here in a minute, and to plug in a value that you want to find the y value for. The default on your calculator is that they're both selecting on auto. Did most of yours look like that when you started? Um, and what that does is it means it gives you a whole list of values to start with, which is fine if you don't care what value you're looking for, but we're really being specific. We want 1.1 and some others here in a minute. We want to be able to plug in the value we want. So after you've changed it so that the first line says ask, the second line says auto, I want you to hit second, graph, and you should have a table that says x and it says y1 and there's nothing in it. Does everybody have that? If you have something in the table already, you can just hit delete to make those lines go away. Not on the x and the y, but on the numbers themselves. Okay. So what you're going to do is underneath the x column, you're going to put in 1.1. And when you do that, what does it say next to it? 3.331, just like we put on the board, right? Isn't that great? All right, so we're going to go in and we're going to do it again, but we're going to make it even closer. So before, I mean, 1.1 is awfully close to 1. Agreed? We're going to get something a little bit closer than that even yet, and we're going to put in 1.01. That's even closer, right? I mean, we're within one one hundredth now of the values. And in your calculator that's easy to do, you can just type in 1.01 .01 right underneath the 1.1. .1. And if you do, it gives you a, uh, a list underneath there. It says, mine says 3.0303. 3. 
and it only shows exactly that many characters, but there are more. If you move your cursor over on top of that number, the 3.0303, you'll actually see that it says the number further at the bottom. So what we're going to do in this class is that when we're filling in tables like this, we're going to write out all the digits that we have up to six digits. Okay? If there are fewer than six digits, we don't need to write extra zeros or anything, but we're going to write as many as six digits. So this is going to say 0303, and then it's going to say 01, because there are two more digits that I can see on the bottom of the screen. What do you think I might let my next x value be? One point zero zero one. Right. It's exactly right. Um, and I can put that in the calculator. Make sure you're putting in the x column. And then if you again move your cursor over on top of the uh, number, it says 3.003. .003. That's what it originally says. And then if you look on, t on the bottom after you've moved your cursor, you've got another 003. Are right, you guys good so far? Okay, we're going to fill in this exact same information in the other side of this table. And then we'll come back to the slope one after afterwards, okay? All right. Now, what do you notice about all of these x values in comparison to the original x value I started with? There's something about all of them that's true. Any thoughts? Yes. There are decimals. That's true. I didn't think about that, but you're right. There's something else that's all in common about all of them. I mean, they're all really close to one. That's a, a feature true, right? The thing that I'm wanting you to see, though, is that they're all slightly bigger. Aren't they? Those numbers are all bigger than one. And so one of the things we have to be careful in calculus when we're working with approximations is that we actually look at both sides of a particular value. So these values are all slightly larger than one. We also want to pick values that would be slightly smaller than one. So what do you think I might pick for my first x value if I'm looking for something slightly smaller? 0 0.9, you got it. Let's go ahead and fill in the other two. What do you think I might pick next after that? Yep, 0 0.99. We're going to do one more, and what's it going to look like? Yeah, 0.999, you got it, you're good. All right, so we can use calculator and we can get those y values very quickly. It's a wonderful tool. So I can put in 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and then 0.999. And if I do that, what is the first y value that I have, the one for 0 0.9? 2.729. 2 now, it's still close to 3, but it's, it's further away than the numbers we were getting at the end of this, right? I mean, these numbers are very close to 3 at the end of my table, but it really wasn't all that close at the beginning. It was 3.3. So the 2.7 is not alarming or anything. How about at 0 0.99? It's 2 point something. 2.9703. Now, this is what your screen shows you, right? And so we're going to go ahead and capture two more decimals after that. So it's 0... 299, very good. And then the last one that we've got up here is 2. Point, what? 99700. Excellent. Uh, that's awfully close to 3, agreed? Like in terms of money, we'd round that up to 3 bucks, agreed? Yeah. All right, so we're going to find slope next. Now, we already mentioned how we find slope. The slope formula was up here. It was y2, and then we're going to subtract 3, and then we're going to do x1, or x2, and we're going to subtract 1. Um, so we're going to use that with each one of these values. We can do that. So now you have to be a little bit careful in the regular screen in your calculator with parentheses. So you're going to start with a parenthesis. You need the first y value. So the first y value is 3.331, and then you're going to subtract the 3 inside a parenthesis. 
okay? Got to be inside the parentheses. And then you're going to put the division uh, button that looks something like this. And then you do the same thing with the x value. So the first x value is 1.1, and we're going to subtract the value of 1 from that. So this is the first sort of line of text you're going to write in your calculator. Some of you guys have um, the calculator where it's going to look exactly like this when you type it in. Some of you have um, something called math type in your calculator, where it's actually going to put it sort of looks like a fraction. Uh, and that's fine, too. You just need to be careful on what you're doing. So after we calculate that, this gives me my slope for the first box right here. What does it give you for your slope? Three point, what was it? Three one. Was it, were there any more decimals than that or was it exactly that? Okay, very good. That's what I have written down too. I just want to make sure I didn't write it down short, shortened. All right, we're going to do the same thing again. But now we're not going to do it with the 3.331 and the 1.1. What are we going to do it with? Well, the next one, right? Now, we're not changing the 3 and the 1. These numbers are going to stay put for all of them. They are going to stay stationary because we're always comparing it to the original point we started with at A equal 1. So what we're going to change is we're going to change these numbers right here. Instead of this now saying 3.331, it's going to say 3.030301. And instead of this point saying 1.1, it's going to say 1.01. Okay? So let's go ahead and fill in the last two pieces right here, and then we'll finish it up next time. So let's change this 3.331, this 1.0, or 1.1. That's the one that we'll change it to for the first one. What do we get for the slope on that? 3 point something. 3.0301. Excellent. And we'll do it one more time. Um, the fact that my y values and my slope values are very similar in this problem is just because of the Cuyuna curve I'm looking at. That is not always going to happen. So we have 3.003003. And we have 1.001. And when we subtract those and then divide, what do we get? Excellent. And we will finish filling in the other slope values next time. All right.